This video shows how Mark is set up, attached to a dental chair, and the location of the sensors. Mark contains a laboratory-grade spectrometer inside a mannequin head. Here we can see the sensors are located in the anterior and the posterior regions. In the posterior region, the sensor is 4 mm from the cusp tips and the sensor is approximately the same size as the class 1 preparation and is 3.9 mm in diameter. Here we can see the anterior sensor which is 1 mm from the facial surface between the two central incisors representing a facial class 3 restoration. Here we can see the location of the posterior sensor in the upper left second molar this sensor represents a more difficult to cure restoration and is 4 mm deep from the cusp tip. The interincisal opening can be adjusted and fixed using the limiter at the back of the deniform. The smaller the opening, the more difficult it will be to reach the posterior restoration and sensor. So here's the mark unit with the USB cable already attached to the spectrometer inside. There's the universal mount, which will now attach to the back of the headrest on the dental chair. We'll adjust the head to the appropriate position and tighten things up. The other side of the cable will now attach to the laptop. Once the USB has been attached, we can start up the mark software. We can see we have some choices of research mode or educational mode. We'll choose the research mode, we'll maximize the screen, and now we can start entering data. We have the user ID. We can now enter the name of the light. You can see there's a drop down menu. We have the modes we can choose. We'll set the time for one second longer than the light will actually be on for. We'll set the mouth opening and the energy that we think is going to be required to adequately cure the resin restoration. We'll now click Run Test. And now we're ready to start collecting data. We can see that data is being collected. There's a timer running. The timer will stop about a second after the light goes off. Here we can see the operator initially had problems locating the tooth. They then found the tooth. They slipped off and then there was some movement um, on and off the tooth during the curing process until 10 seconds was reached. The maximum radiance was 1293, the mean was 947, and the total energy delivered was 9.5 joules per centimeter squared. In this particular case, if we wanted to deliver 16 joules of energy, this light would have to be used for 18 seconds. We're now going to look at uh, what there is in the data tab. So when you click on the data tab, you can see all of the data that has been collected by operator, by light, and we can see differences. And we can now graph those as well by now selecting on the irradiance tab. Here we can see the irradiance delivered by the selected lights. We can see some lights only used for 3 seconds, some are used for 10 seconds, some pulse. Um, when you hover over the line, we actually can see the irradiance delivered. It's interesting to look at the spectrum as well. We can see here the spectrum is different. So when we hover over the line, we can see the information we selected to be displayed. We can export the data. Uh, looking at the options, we can export just an image, or we can export the irradiance or the spectrum as a JPEG, and also we can export the data as a comma separated value uh, format. We can export all the data, we can export the raw irradiance data, the raw spectrum data, or we could just choose to export selected data as a CSV file.